in uh, daily life, and uh, green tea as a supplement or, of course, as a beverage. They do have green tea supplements now. Uh, gen generally to avoid, as you've probably all heard before, any of the processed sugars, uh, too many of the, the fried foods, acidic, and pretty much all of the animal products that we're not against consuming animal products here, but just in moderation are acidic. So that's a that good rule of thumb. Anything genetically modified of which canola oil is. Do you know can canola oil comes from the rapeseed? But they didn't want to call it rape oil. <laughs> they called it canola because it's grown in Canada. And it's theorized that it, because of its GMO, it actually coats the cells like a plastic wrap. It doesn't allow such an unnatural oil that you can't use. So it, it was totally genetically modified just for uh, for profit and because it grows in a cold climate, something the Canadians can grow. So mm -hmm. I'd avoid that. Yeah, that's in like all the processed foods. So and, and any time you eat out, you're probably getting it. And of course, too many grains because the grains convert to sugar, as do all of the rooted vegetables, uh, beets, potatoes, um, yams. Yams are actually some of the best, but those all do con convert to sugar. So in moderation, I'm not against carbohydrates in general, especially on processed foods. And the high estrogen foods to avoid, everybody's pre pretty familiar with soy because it's so, so GMO, but I was even shocked on this one, the flax. Flax has many times what, what soy has as, as far as what's called phytoestrogens or plant-based estrogens, and I'm going to get into that, but that's a good one to, to avoid. Um, it's being marketed as a health food. It does have the omega-3s, but it, it also has just a really high, high concentration of estrogens, and most breast cancers are estrogen driven. Yeah, so good to avoid. For breast health in general, for fibrosis and cysts, I actually talked to Dr. Keneally. These are some of the things that she, she would recommend or put a patient on. There's estrogen blockers that are natural. Uh, they're, they're called myomin, dim, and calcium d um, Those are something to take a, take a look into. I don't know the specific properties, uh, but they do help block um, estrogen. Um, now, I say they do not help reduce vascularity. Vascularity is going to be like the negative buzzword of the night. Okay, I'm going to show you that because vascularity is bad to have on a thermogram. It's not a good thing. So we've actually taken thermograms before and after a woman consuming the, uh, some of these, such as myomin, and did not notice a change in vascularity. But Dr. Keneally and other practitioners did notice a reduction in cysts um, and fibrosis when, when taken. So those can be used. And castor oil packs are always good, not only for uh, breast health, but also for abdominal uh, disorders. Anything to get the circulation going, including the muscles up. Okay, so we're going to go through some lifestyle tips. So underwire bras are not a good idea. Um, they cut off the lymph supply. So the anatomy here is the anterior cervical chain of the lymph system comes down to the tail of Spence, Spence, which is right here, and then proceeds to the breast, both male and female. Underwire bra cuts that right off. Uh, the quick lymph system 101 lymph system is the garbage collection agency of your body. You don't want to cut it off. You don't want it to go on strike because the trash will pile up. So if you think of the, the lymph as a little, like a little hose connected to little, little bolts, um, if you cut, cut that, you're not going to get the lymph circulation, which takes all of the garbage out of the tissues. So I'm not against young ladies wearing underwire bras for a night on the town or something, but they don't need to be worn all the time around the house. You can perform the self uh, lymph massage, um, and, uh, that's, and then also provide the, uh, the self breast exam, and those are some of the motions on the breast. And there's YouTube videos for this now. Okay, these are following on the, the handout that we, that we talked about. And for those of you in online, if interested, just email me at the center. We'll get you a copy of these. So sleep in pitch black. Um, melatonin, which is only released in really in pitch black in, in environments, is protective against breast cancer. Also helps people give people a good night's sleep. Good night's sleep is healthy to prevent all diseases, right? Not just cancer, breast cancer specifically. So, so uh, pitch black, especially if you have sleeping, sleeping problems. You can also take melatonin. I say try the pitch black room the environment first. If that doesn't work, then you can try some melatonin. Two cups of broccoli. We mentioned that during the cruciferous. That can be alternated with two cups of cauliflower or any of the other ones just for some variety. Some people get sick of things. Just uh, I prefer it really lightly steamed. Broccoli is, is difficult for a lot of people's stomachs to break down. I mean, it's pretty, pretty hard. So just steam for like a minute. Also, if there is any parasites on the broccoli, the steaming will, will remove those. For the rock food advocates out there, I do believe in raw, but I also believe there's parasites in a lot of stuff on food, and I'd rather lose a few nutrients in my food and not get the parasite load, personally. Uh, the broccoli com contains this indole 3 carbonyl, uh, which promotes a healthy uh, estrogen balance, estrogen balance with progesterone. Uh, avoid 
excess alcohol, right? Anything that, that, that's too fun is probably not good for you. So they, they found that more than four servings a week increases risk. And it, alcohol does wipe out vitamin B complex in, in anybody's system. So if you follow the alcohol composition with vitamin B, and uh, vitamin B complex uh, that's high in folic acid, and we do carry that here, can also be found online. That'll help um, not so many detrimental effects. Exercise. Women who exercise four more hours a week had a really significant reduction in cancer, probably in other diseases too. Exercise primarily actually is for the brain. It's not so much for weight loss, but also oxygenates the whole system. Cancer does not like oxygen. Avoid breast implants. They may increase the, the risk of, of breast cancer. Also noted they make mammography and some of the more traditional imaging modalities much less effective. They do not affect thermography. Meditation, it decreases that nasty stress hormone, cortisol, and increases serotonin, which is the feel-good feel hormone. So we prescribe that to some of our patients here, not just cancer patients, but meditate. Liver cleanse, twice yearly, we have a number of liver cleanses that, that can be prescribed. The liver is actually responsible for a lot of things with hormones, uh, but it's for the breakdown of estrogen. So if the liver's not working, it's not breaking down the estrogen, guess what, you're gonna get spiking estrogen levels equals bad idea. Acidophilus, which is one, uh, one type of, of uh, good bacteria, so in the form of probiotic supplements, uh, and they, those in the intestine help break down estrogen as well. So it's that whole breakdown um, cycle that you're trying to promote. Uh, brush your skin improves the lymphatic drainage. Skin brushing, you can look it up online. Doesn't take very long, can be something maybe after a shower. And use a rebounder. Uh, we have one here, uh, Liliana has one, it's a little mini trampoline. That's also really good for getting the lymph going throughout the whole body kind of bounce on it. Uh, iodine supplementation. Apoptosis is natural cell death, which is what you want. That's something that cancer cells don't do. They don't die. They just keep on going and going and going. So iodine helps trigger that apoptosis, cell, that cell death, which destroys that normal cells and even some cells that are in the process of becoming cancers. So it, it's thought that you don't just suddenly have a healthy cell and poof, it's cancer. There's this whole kind of degradation downturn for the cell stops using normal energy, it starts a fermentation process, it starts to like an acidic environment, and it stops to not need oxygen, it goes anaerobic. So it may help, if a cell is not too, too far gone, it may help re reverse that. Avoiding all any chemicals, but there are so many toxic household cleaning products that have never been tested, uh, and many uh, contain the hormone disruptors and mammary gland carcinogens. Okay, so mammary gland suppressed, and they can be carcinogenic, create free radicals, which can also cause cancer. Healthy levels of vitamin D. Here in Southern California, we don't have so much problem with that. I didn't think, but then I thought everybody's inside all day, so it doesn't matter <laughs> if we're here or the North Pole. So try to get outside. The, the BMJ is the British Medical Journal. Uh, found that those with the highest levels were 40% low, lower risk than those with the lower levels. They probably did that in England, which is pretty far north. Uh, the further north you go, the less time, especially during the winter, you have for sun. Uh, the best time to get sun uh, is debatable, but for someone fair skinned like me is dawn or dusk. The sun at the angle, you're not at such risk for getting burned. Uh, and 10 to 20 minutes a day is good. Just on a lunch break, go out and take a little walk. Let's get a little sun. And remove as many plastics from your life. This is, again, not just for breast cancer, not just for cancer, but for many, many diseases. Water bottles are number one. I can't tell you the number of patients that come in here with the water bottle that's been sitting in the sun. And you can tell because it's, it's, it's not full, and so it's got that condensation. Uh, we proudly use men water here. It's uh, come to us in three-gallon glass carboys. That's one of the main reasons we use them. It's one of the only water companies you can get that delivers in glass. So uh, everybody carries the, the, the water bottles now. I'm a total klutz, so I have the one surrounded or, um, or, uh, with a plastic uh, shroud, so if I drop it, <laughs> I can still, still it's okay. Um, they're available at most major stores, so pretty easy to replace that one. Also food storage products, um, anything you're gonna store, and especially microwave, which is a whole other store, <laughs> microwave, or even reheat food in, you definitely wanna be glass because that's when the plastic really releases really those phthalates, and those are just really bad, uh, really bad for your system. Baby products too, those with little ones in their lives, Try to go uh, go for a glass if they make bottles, maybe in stainless steel. Obviously, glass is kind of hard; it can, can be dropped quite easy. Maybe they have a shrouded one like I have. Okay. So I mentioned before uh, that's it for the, li the lifestyle tips. Those are all on that that handout sheet. Um, so you can go home and share them with your loved ones, friends. Vascularity is the, is the dirty word of the evening. I'll show you why a little later. But the, the definition.
definition, it's, it's a result of hormone imbalances. So we see it as an estrogen dominance, which is called a rel re relative progesterone deficiency. So estrogen is, is up too much, relative to progesterone is down too much. We call it relative because the pornography is not a lab test. It doesn't give you absolute values. Absolute values, it just is relative to one another. In Chinese medicine, it would be the balance of yin and yang. Okay, when those are out of balance, disease can strike. So estrogen causes the blood vessels to dilate, thus increasing this vascularity, this vascular pattern, and they're a precursor to disease. Not just cancer again, weight gain, mood swings, hair loss, decreased libido. I don't think anybody really wants any of those. Uh, the cancers that are estrogen driven, uh, any of the reproductive organ cancers in there. The interesting thing, you'd say, okay, well I can do a saliva test, I can do a blood test for estrogen. You can, but that only measures the natural estrogen. It doesn't measure the estrogen that's phyto, or plant-based, or xeno. Xeno means exogenous, or, or foreigner-based. Okay, so the xenoestrogens are those that are in the plastics, in all, all of the processed, uh, processed things that are in our life, and all of the chemicals, the household products. Phyto is in the plants. So thermography is the only way to see the combination of the natural estrogens and the environmental. So I mentioned before, soy and flax have the highest amount for the phyto. Soy is fine and everything because it's really cheap. If you don't think you eat soy, you take anything, I guarantee there's going to be soy lechis in 90% of it. They use it as a filler because it's cheap. It's also a binder. And flax is becoming increasingly popular because it does have the oils. It does have the omega-3, but it also has all these estrogens. Xenos, laundry detergents, antiperspirants, all these chemicals, the plastics. So try to, try to avoid as many of those. You live here, you breathe the air, you drink the water, you're already getting enough. <laughs> So some studies on progesterone from 1981, uh, women that were deficient in progesterone were 5.0 times more likely to acquire breast cancer and 10 times to develop cancer of any sort. Mm -hmm. Was that in 1981? Uh, it helps prevent in endometrial cancer. It it's an important factor in the prevention and treatment of breast cancer because using the thermography, you can actually monitor vascular. And I have a slide showing someone that was really vascular, woman that was really vascular, and then apply the progesterone cream for a couple months and came back, vascular is gone. So you can prove that, it, that it's working. And the high levels of stress can lead to hormone imbalances, which doesn't surprise me, uh, which interfere with the immune system function. If your immune system is weak, um, then, and that was 1991, then you're, you're just setting yourself up for a whole lot of diseases. Mammography. Mammography's not looking so good anymore. Uh, this, this, uh, Miller, uh, this wasn't too long ago in, in Toronto, 90,000 women, that's a big study, in their 40s and 50s. At the 13-year follow-up, 105 of 25 to 14 um, women who had mammography died uh, from breast cancer, and 107 who only did the self-exam died of almost the same population to two more, two more women. So this conclusion was there's no advantage to mammograms because if the, if the death rate's the same, why, why go through the whole thing? And I asked, what is the harm? Well, what happens when a mammogram smashes a tumor? Well, spread, does spread? I don't know. It's a theory. Could. Also, what's all the radiation? They have gotten a lot better with that in the past years. They used to use a ton of radiation. Now with the digital technology, it has come down, and their digital storage and comparison techniques are better, I'll say. But uh, is it really that comfortable? So if it doesn't do any good, and it could do some harm, why do it? Sample of the breast tomography study findings found it's 99% sensitive. So it was able to catch 99 out of 100 confirmed cancers. That's pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. That's really good for medical imaging. Isn't perfect. 95% specific, so it was actually able to diagnose that it, in, in 100 that 95 were benign, which avoids biopsies. Probably a good thing. And the sensitivity increase, this was a study where they actually combined it with mammography, from 85 to 98%. So it was sensitive, so it was actually one less sensitive than alone when they combined it, but I just thought that was interesting when combined with another. I, I put this together because people wonder where does it really fit. First of all, it's definitely not a diagnostic. Uh, thermography is a screening. Screening is to say that a woman comes in and they find an abnormal something, they go on to other imaging. It's not, oh, you have breast cancer. It could be an adenoma, it could be fast growing cyst. It doesn't happen as a breast cancer. Mastitis, filamentary breast cancer. There's a lot of other, other breast diseases out there. Mammography locates, although the ultrasound, I put as confirms, but the ultrasound has come up now with this 4D color, and it's actually able to do a lot of the locating on its own. 
So I think Ultron is going to be an up and coming after a positive thermogram to go to. And then most of the conventional treatments require a biopsy to establish diagnosis. Um, what I did not put on here that should belong is an MRI. Uh, an MRI with contrast is, is the gold standard. Out of pocket, it's about $800, where a thermography is about two something. And it does require um, the patient to take adalinium, which is radioactive. So I don't think in small doses, once, once in a while that's okay, but I don't think taking a lot of radioactive all the time is really good. But the MRI really does show everything that's going on. So how does the thermography work? It utilizes a heat camera, an infrared camera, to produce this heat picture. It shows variations in blood vessels, and I have images that I can show you. And the subtle uh, physiological changes differentiate cancer from adenomas, thermocystic breast and infection. Basically, by the vascular pattern, a really trained uh, breast thermography interpreter can, can, can determine it, can differentiate cancer from these, although still it's screening and needs to go to follow up. Uh, the blood vessel variations can show tumors that are not uh, usually large enough to be detected by other physical exam mammography or other imaging. You have to remember thermography is physiological. All these other imaging are anatomical. Physiological is imaging body processes, in this case blood flow. Anatomy is imaging, anatomical is imaging anatomy, is imaging what's structurally there. So it's in a different realm, that's how it's able to do that. Physiology always, uh, physiological changes always precede anatomical changes. There's going to be some physiology different, a chemical imbalance, a blood change, something before something like a tumor shows up. So recommended starting at age 25. Remember the first statistic where it said that, that where it went from uh, 1 in 19,000 to 1 in 2 something, 217, and 25 to 35? When does mammography start? Age 40? Age 50? So they're already in that. Thermography can start at age 25. Why 25 and not younger? Um, some women are late to develop, and um, after puberty, the breast should maintain the same vascular patterns uh, through life, unless there's a major trauma. But through puberty, the breasts are developing, so it, it, it's not it's not helpful to track changes over time. Uh, the testing occurrences every other year of no abnormalities for those 25 to 40 and over 40. It's kind of like recommended mammogram once a year. Uh, the age 25 to 40 is the fastest grow growing, most devastating. Those are those that are really fueled by, by hormones, and that those are the, um, unfortunately, the stories we see here in the cancer center, um, and I mean, that are really scary. And it's important to establish a baseline. As I mentioned, the vascular patterns are set at a younger age, at age 25. So if you have a baseline, it makes it easier to interpret future images because you can always compare back to what, what the normal was back then. So it's 100% safe. It's just looking at the heat that's put off by the body. Non-contact, there's no pancake smasher. Totally non-invasive, you're not breaking the skin. There's no radiation, there's no pain. It's a little bit cold. We have a, a cooled room, that's about the worst thing. And it is approved as an, as an adjunct thermography. Um, unfortunately, thermography, unlike other imaging, is not regulated. And there are some clinics out there using quite a bit inferior cameras. Um, that is getting better as the camera costs come down. Um, the reason they were using it is the, the, the cheaper cameras, the ones that are inferior, are just that they're cheaper, they're not, they're not as expensive, so it's less of a financial burden to, uh, to purchase them. So we probably use my father's camera, although that's not the only camera out there. There's ones now um, that, that are just as good or even better. Um, he's actually retired, and um, they have um, they have these specifications, 600 optical lines and this kind of sensitivity. So it's not just how the resolution is all, but also the thermal sensitivity of the camera to the minute changes. Also, uh, when choosing a thermography clinic, ask who's doing the reading, <laughs> because you can even have a great camera, and if the person isn't trained, if it's someone that just kind of bought a camera and thought they could read them, they need to be certified. Ours are certified with William Hobbins, who's a medical doctor uh, with 35 years of experience, and he read over 176,000 images. So. Okay. So I'm going to go through some uh, breast health conditions. These are, uh, these are images, actual breast uh, images. Okay. So there's four views taken um, when performing the thermography. There's frontal, under, and then what we call right oblique and left oblique. Interestingly enough, about 15% of breast cancers occur in this tail of spence. Well, if you have a mammogram and you, you smash here, usually you miss that. So that's where mammography can miss some cancers right there, whereas the thermography goes all the way up into the axilla, 
into the arm. So this is normal. We don't see a lot of black veins or anything like that. Um, it's pretty not the the breasts aren't, aren't being stimulated by estrogen. That estrogen dominance progesterone deficiency. I should back up the thermography is uh, each breast is graded from one to five. TH means thermographic score. So those are bilateral TH one. This would be bilateral TH two. So one's completely normal. Five is completely abnormal. So we're starting to see some of the veins and everything. They're still not a bad image. That's about what the what the average healthy person is today. Okay. So that's a three. Okay, you can see quite a bit of estrogenic stimulation because it is on both sides. There's a circle on the left, left lateral breast where the vascularity is even quite a bit darker, meaning it's warmer um, as compared to the other side. But it's still a three. We call that equivocal. Only about 10% of those will actually go on to have breast cancer. But if you had this and knew it, wouldn't you want to do something like progesterone cream or something to lower the estrogens in your life to get, to get away from this? So the right breast looks fine, but look at this vascular pattern over here. We prefer to read in black and white because we can see the, the changes, but we can also change it to read in color. You can see the color is completely off the charts as well. So that's TH4. And these are the oblique views. So you can see over here there's no vascular pattern and then the vascular over there on the left. So that's, um, that's actually called a leopard pattern. And, and you can see this breast is just completely encircled. So I ask, where in the body is it normal to have veins that go in circles? Yeah. So it's something. So it's something completely uh, abnormal. Okay. okay. This is what happens when patients use estrogen patches. So this patient was uh, came in. This was in, this was another clinic, and this is six months post using estrogen patch. So you can see it's it's not desirable. It's still not a terrible image. But what if they were on that patch for five years? So you can use the thermography. Now, not all women will develop that vascular. I'm not saying estrogen patches are bad for everybody, but you can use the thermography to monitor, right, to see if, if you are progressing down that line. Estrogen pellets, this is what they, this is what they look like. So you can see by, by now bilateral. Um, remember the TH4 where you had just the vascularity on one side? That's actually the worst. It's better to have it on both because the chances of having bilateral breast cancer are at the at the same time, are very, very low. So this is a systemic problem, more likely than, than, than a cancer, but it's a setup. It's a really risk factor for developing cancer. So another grade three. Again, you can see this circle. Yeah. And actually, another one up over, almost complete up over there. So this was just the progesterone cream. This was six months' usage of progesterone cream once a day, just applied right to the breasts. If we found that to be the most effective, there are progesterone pills or rectal suppositories, but the, the creams are, are, are the, I think, most women are the easiest, and they work. This is showing reversal of that vascular. We still have a little bit, but quite a bit better. Mm -hmm. There's different grades of progesterone cream. 1% uh, is actually available on everybody's store, Amazon. Uh, and then the 6%, 10%, I think it goes even higher, are prescription. So based on vascular pattern, if there's just a little bit of vascularity, you could probably just be corrected with over-the-counter uh, progest. So we had a 25-year-old come in. She wanted to come in earlier, but we wouldn't, we wouldn't let her because the age is 25. And she said, my grandmother died of breast cancer, my mother died of breast cancer. You know, what uh, What am I going to do? And we said, well, why don't you get imaged? 25 now. So this, she had been on birth, controls, birth control pills for at least 10 years. And you can see she's already set up already set up to get This is the flax study. So we decided to do a flax study. And we purchased the really good organic flax. So nobody could say it was GMO, the oil. And we put one of my um, my business partner's friends on it. She was 40, 42 years old, is that? Healthy female. Um, and these are the before. So this is the raw image. And then I just did some image processing just to bring out Vascularity, and then you can see afterwards. So the study was supposed to last for a couple months. We had her taking, um, I think, a tablespoon a day, quite a bit. And after about a month, she she couldn't handle it anymore. She said she was had like menopausal symptoms, depression, suicide. I mean, it just her it, it it basically made all of her hormones just go out of whack because she upped her estrogen level in comparison to progesterone. 
And then to back that up, you can see the development of more of those things. So she wanted to go off that we said that's fine. Got so what does a cancer look like? Well, in this case, the the hyperthermia, the heat was located over where the cancer is, and this is that's the vascular image, image as you can see with the black and white. Um, that's not always the case. Where you see a hot spot isn't necessarily where a tumor is. Because uh, if a tumor is in deep tissue, the whole breast can be hot because there's more circulation going there to, to feed the tumor. So in this case it was, but, but it's not always. But you'll see more vascularity, and the, the, the heat of one breast compared to the other will be a lot more. Be a, quite a bit more. So um, this was already a vascular uh, positive patient, and you can see, see this star? around the nipple. And remember those other circles around the nipple? That is a really high risk factor. And indeed, this, this, this patient did have cancer. You can see feeding, it coming down from the mammary artery to feed that tumor. Um, someone already had a lumpectomy, even a mastectomy, because I have seen tumors regrow on a cell on the chest wall before, after uh, you know, even not common, thank goodness. But post-lumpectomy, post a patient can be monitored to see if they indeed did get all, get all the cancer. So you can see, I, I don't think they did here because this was still pretty active. You can see the areas there. But there's something starting to, starting to grow again. Okay, 55 year old female, biopsy September uh, 2000, had a lumpectomy shortly after, and she committed her radiation in, uh, in November. So pretty, pretty short course there, just a couple months, right? So, this rest here with that, with those veins, is what is uh, is what we're looking at. There's still something going on. Yeah. Again, still has that that circle, still circle patterns on the nipple. Yeah. Compared to how cool, there's no veins in the rest. 63 year old uh, hysterectomy in 2003, uh, like lumpectomy of the right breast and family history of breast cancer. So. Okay. So she had had a lumpectomy in the right breast, and this was a progression we did. So April of 08, December of 08, and March of 09. Mammography was actually negative on all three of these, and the MRI was negative on the first two, and even the MRI, and I know I, know I said MRI is the gold center, but it managed to miss it. Whereas we noticed changes going on, you know, what's that, almost a, um, a year and some before with the tomography. So you can see the data. Again, we'll see there's that, there's the completeness there. You can see it getting really worse. This is just the left, the, the, that left oblique view. So the breast tomography is, it's pain-free. It's no radiation uh, adjunct. We can't tell we say adjunct to mammography. It can allow detection of breast disease, not just breast cancer years earlier. And uh, the younger you are to get a baseline, the better. If you're not, if you're not young, you didn't miss the boat. It just helps later. You can also monitor uh, breast uh, breast diseases or courses of treatment. With it. We do that here at the center. When we have a breast cancer patient, we can monitor very quickly because you can take the thermograms as much as you like. They're completely safe. The radiation and see if the therapies are working. Okay. So that's what I have for you. And I'm happy to share this presentation. I can save it as a PDF and email for anybody. I know I went kind of fast. Anybody that wants and that they, if they have loved ones, family members, friends, they would like to I, I, don't, Just don't say it to yours. That's all I'm asking. Um, do we have any questions on any of them? I have a question about the, you know, the water bottles. Yeah. You said there was one company that makes uh, plastic, you know, glass. Does glass water bottle. Okay, the, the company is called MEND, M-E-N-D, and they'll deliver here in Orange County. M-E-N-D? Yeah, like you're mending. Mm -hmm. Mending your bones. So do this. There might be others. The other alternative, I reside in San Diego, and there's a Carlsbad Spring that you can go and fill up your own bottle. So you can buy your own glass bottles and fill them. Just a word of caution: I, I weighed one because I'm always the one here to <laughs> bottles on. Uh, you know, water is eight pounds per gallon, so that's 24 pounds just in a, just in the three. That goes into five, and then and then those bottles. Uh, anyway, it came out over 30 pounds. <laughs> I put it on the scale, so they can be a bit heavy, and you don't want to drop them. Simple question: What's your opinion about the BRCA genes uh, for breast cancer and family history? You know, my 
slight opinion on those, and this is from watching The Truth About Cancer, which was a documentary that came out last year, and I will say I'm in it, as are five other practitioners here, uh, so I'm not burning it for that. It wasn't me who said it, but they said that that may even be protective. That's right. So I would, yeah, I, I, I know, I was shocked too, like everything else. Um, so I would, I'd be careful to label or to say that if someone has that BRCA gene, that for sure they're doomed to get cancer. It may even be the opposite. Are you recommending the chia seed over black, uh, black seed? Yes, chia seed is part of black. Chia, uh, the, the hemp, and remember, as far as the milks go, you know, almond, hemp, oat, oat tends to have more sugar, rice has more sugar, but they don't have the, 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 the phytoestrogens in them at least, um, as opposed to the soy milk. Yeah, any of those other seeds are okay. What about coconut milk? Coconut milk is fine. Okay. Very good source, and the coconut oil is a great, great oil too. Okay, so we're gonna do we're gonna do a raffle. Oh, oh, tickets. Oh, I have a question. I'm sorry. Okay. So if you have a fibrocystic disease or something like that, fibrocystic breast yeah. disease, yeah, yeah. Will that cause any vascular you know, blood vessel? It can. It could. it could. It could. If you know that it's fibrocystic for sure, though, you can do the castor oil packs um, and the uh, the estrogen blockers. The, uh, yeah, the dim, uh, the dim, the calcium deglucurate. Those have been found by Dr. Keneally to be effective. Hmm. Um, let me go back for you. you Also, iodine. Iodine is a good supplement for it. Yeah, myelin and dim and calcium. So, yeah, iodine and the castor oil packs and the... Try one of those at a time, but don't do it all at once. Yeah. Not the estrogen blocker? Uh, try one at a time, so try myelin. You need to, that's a prescription drug, right? Uh, no, I don't think it is. It's not? No, I think it's available. I think it's myelin. available. Myelin? Yeah. You have it here. I think we have it here, yeah. A prescription estrogen blocker um, um, would be much, it's much more potent. Yeah. So those, so the, I wouldn't list those here because I'm not. So if I ask them, you have any estrogen blocker, they will know. Correct, at the price, right? Yeah. My mm -hmm. the yeah. Um, does the insurance cover the thermographic, or is that is there a price for that? No, that's, that's cash. Here it's 225 Oh. I'm going to raffle off two fifty dollar off right now. And if a gentleman receives one, you can they are transferable. Okay, they're transferable, or you can trade in for a fifty dollar uh, same value for a free advance on a session. Okay, so she's going to Vanna's going to come around and give everybody. I have another question. Sure. In selecting a probiotic, is it more important to select a probiotic with multiple strands or or more more uh, um, more more number more number more number. More number. That's a, that's a, it's, it's, that's a debate, a it's a debate going on, and I, know, and I know why, and I respect it. It's a debate going on because for one patient, patient A, it may be better that they're just deficient in that one. If you have a relatively healthy gut that's deficient in one, if you just put a small amount of those down there, they will replicate. You see what I mean? So if, in other words, you don't need 4 billion over 2 billion, it's not going to make a difference where you, if, you, if they're not replicated, they're going to die when you put them down there. So I tend to lean towards more of a spectrum. But that being said, if you want to try the singles, you're just a single shot. Okay. You said it's rated one to five. So if you don't have any indication, it would, you would be a zero or is one? Like you would be a one. You would be a one. You would be a one, yeah. And what Dr. Hobbins found, he's, he's retired now. When he first started collecting, he actually imaged 250 some, but 176 to develop the model, you know, for what, what are the allowable limits, um, and that. When he first started collecting data, almost every every female was a one. Now every female's a two or three. Because of the birth control pills, because of all the plastics, the environmental estrogen, because of all the cyclical wax. So should you be concerned if you're a two, or is that kind of the yeah. Two, I don't know the statistic, but even a three, only it was only 10% actually went on to have the breast cancer. Yes, yeah, so I don't think a two I'd be super concerned. Yeah. 
I well, still I had one, and I'm trying to remember what my score was. Oh, I know okay. that Dr. Keneally said that, you know, that it was warm. I could use the term warm. Okay. One breast was warmer than the other. Had a warm well, I had a lump many, many years ago, 20-something years ago. Okay. So, and I'm trying to remember what number it was. Okay. <laughs> Does everybody have a ticket that wants to speak? Are you still on camera? Yes, we're taping it. We're still taping it. Okay. Yeah. okay. The last number 50. Oh, that's good. Okay. <laughs> okay, so see us afterwards. We'll get you. Okay? And then what? Great. Oh, I'm looking back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.